In this video, we're going to talk about ball bearings. Let's see, we're going to start off here in McMaster Car. Type in ball bearings. <clears throat> and here we go ball bearings. Ball bearings are uh, a type of hardware that allow you to spin something very smoothly, very um, reliably and repeatably with uh, very little friction. Ball bearings are precision pieces of hardware, uh, typically the, the outer and inner race diameters. Uh, I'll point to that. So this would be the outer race, the outside of the bearing. And then the inner race is here on the inside. Those diameters are typically very high precision. In fact, let's just take a few, take a look at some of these here. Um, we'll say, oh, I don't know, for shaft diameter, three-eighths of an inch. And for housing ID, seven-eighths of an inch. Looks like that's our only choice there, these things. Okay, and let's take a look at the drawing. Okay, so we have a, an OD of seven eighths of an inch plus zero minus four tenths, four ten thousandths of an inch. That's a that's a pretty tight tolerance. And on the ID and the inner race, we have three eighths of an inch plus nothing minus three ten thousandths of an inch. The width is typically not as tightly toleranced, which is fine. That's not the critical geometry anyway. So you can see here in this one, plus zero minus five thousandths of an inch, not ten thousandths. Um, but uh, these, whenever you see, you know, two, three, four, ten thousandths of an inch, uh, you know that that's a, a good candidate for a press fit. And in fact, uh, ball bearings are often press fit. The outer race will be press fit into uh, the block of whatever it goes into. And then oftentimes you will press fit your shaft into the uh, the inner race of the bearing. Although sometimes it's it's kind of more of a uh, a, a slip, a tight slip fit or a transitional fit between the, the axle, you know, the shaft and the inner race. Um, but uh, often it's a press fit with the outer race and, and it can be a press fit on the inner race as well. Uh, let's see, let's just look at a few others. Ball bearings. We'll, we'll kind of look at, uh, you know, something pretty similar here. Um, let's see, we'll say sealed ball bearings come in a few different seal types. It can be open, which is the, uh, the least amount of friction because there's, there's no seal that, um, adds any resistance to that spinning motion, but the open type, uh, you might get debris or some dirt might fall in there. So if you're working in a, a dirty environment or, you know, maybe outdoors somewhere where it's dusty or something, you, you probably want at least a shielded or maybe um, ideally a sealed bearing. And usually when you're working with ball bearings, a little bit of resistance is not going to be a big deal. Um, if you're, I don't know, turning a motor shaft or something like that, a little bit of resistance is just not going to be a big deal. There are some applications where you want as close to zero resistance as possible. And, and for those, I would suggest uh, an open seal type, which is no seal. Um, so let's see, I don't know if we looked at a sealed one and maybe this thing will say for a half inch diameter uh, shaft and one and an eighth. I don't know. Let's select this one and see what that looks like. All right, so almost identical. In fact, I think they are the same tolerances here. Plus minus, uh, plus nothing, minus four tenths on the outer race. Plus nothing, minus three tenths on the inner race. Well, let's go back a little uh, few pages here and see what else we can look at. Okay, um, something else I wanted to to show everyone is. Uh, there are what are called uh, needle roller bearings. Let's see. Needle roller bearings. And instead of small uh, steel balls, these needle roller bearings have, um, <clears throat> they're almost like really small dowel pins inside there that, uh, that replace the balls in, in ball bearings. And <clears throat> These, uh, these needle roller bearings typically have a, a higher load capacity. So let's see, this one is for 
uh, I don't know, let's compare apples to apples and say, let's look at a quarter inch shaft diameter. So this one right here, rated at 570 uh, pounds for dynamic load. Um, and if we go to a ball bearing, that's a quarter inch, for a quarter inch shaft, that is. For shaft diameter, quarter inch, um, our our load capacity is 320 on this one, 320 on this one. This one's pretty high actually, 620, 320, 620. Down here we got 330, 520, 330, 520. So generally uh, a little bit lower. A few more down here, 400, 250, 250, 260, 80, 240. Um, so anyway, uh, needle roller bearings offer a little bit higher load capacity. Um, let's see, oftentimes, oh, let's, let's look at one other thing. So ball bearings and needle roller bearings, they're not terribly expensive. You might pay, I don't know, five or ten dollars, maybe a little bit more for one of these. But if you're using an application where cost is a factor and you're trying to get really, uh, really low cost bearings, you can use what's called a, 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 uh, sleeve bearing. So here's an example of a sleeve bearing and a sleeve bearing is basically just a cylinder. It's a cylinder made out of a low friction material such as oil embedded brass like this one right here often referred to as oil light bushings. Um, there are also plastic ones like uh, what let's see what what plastics do they have here material, uh, I saw nylon, UHMW, acetyl, PTFE. These are all really low friction plastics. And again, they're just a cylinder. There, there are no moving parts in them, no balls, no needle rollers, just a plain cylinder and that's it. And, and they're not as, as high precision uh, or as smooth, as uh, low friction as ball bearings are, but um, they, they're certainly cheaper. You know, you might pay I don't know, 50 cents to a couple dollars for one of these um, uh, one of these sleeve bearings versus a ball bearing. So that's uh, that's an overview on what some of these bearings are. Uh, next, we'll take a look at what uh, um, what a, a real world design looks like that incorporates some ball bearings. Here's a gear train or a gear box that uh, that we designed a few years back. Um, you can see right here there's a ball bearing. This is another one there, another one there, and there, and two more here. And if you look at how many uh, axles are in this, you'll see that there are three. There's one here, two, and three. And you'll notice that there is a, a pair of bearings associated with each axle. And that's the ideal way to incorporate bearings when they're used with axles because Having a bearing uh, on either side of the axle, or uh, in, in this case, we weren't able to get a, a bearing on either side of the axle, but we did have two bearings next to each other, and that just provides better support for your axle when it turns, better stability um, for for rotation. So um, th that's, that's a, a best practice whenever you can, is to put a, a bearing on either side of your axle, um, and then something else I'll point out, and this is a common way to, to hold bearings in place. Uh, I mentioned earlier that bearings are often press fit in place, and that was the case in this design, but we wanted kind of a, a backup, um, you know, a, assurance that these bearings wouldn't come out. You know, maybe it gets really, really hot one day out in the sun and the material uh, this this block of material, which was aluminum, expands a little bit, and these bearings start to lose their their press fit. Well, we put these retainer rings in here. These guys right here. Um, let's see if I can do a cross section. There we go. That's a good view, and uh, I'll make this opaque. There we go. We can see these grooves that were cut into the aluminum and then uh, these retainer rings that were placed in those grooves and those retainer rings just keep these bearings in place and that's that's a common method of holding a bearing in place whether it's a ball bearing or um, uh, or a sleeve bearing either one would work just fine 
Um, what else can we look at here? Uh, it was it was very important in this gearbox that we have uh, extremely precise positioning between our two bevel gears here. In fact, I'll I'll uh, kind of spin these around a little bit so we can see. There we go. How everything moves together. But when you're working with gears, it's critical that the relative positioning between the gears is very very precise. Otherwise, your gears won't be as efficient, they'll wear out more quickly, and so you want the positioning of your gears to be within a few thousands of an inch of uh, nominal positions. And ball bearings, because they are very high, high precision pieces of hardware, allow you to do that. And that's, uh, that's another reason that we, another reason why we used ball bearings in, uh, in this application. Another type of ball bearings I want to look at are linear ball bearings. So linear ball bearings. And as the name implies, linear ball bearings allow you to move something linearly, very smoothly. There, there's kind of a serpentine. You can't really see it very well in the picture, but you can see a little bit of it right here at the end. There's kind of this like serpentine back and forth racetrack pattern of little tiny balls inside these uh, these linear ball bearings and so your shaft runs through the uh, the inside of the linear ball bearing or sometimes your shaft is stationary and the linear ball bearing runs on the out is what is what moves on the outside of your shaft but uh, whereas typical ball bearings will allow something to spin very smoothly these bearings allow something to slide back and forth very smoothly and there are a few different types so uh, these linear ball bearings that we were just looking at, uh, you can incorporate, you know, into anything you want. You just drill a, a big bore out of your material, and you can press fit these linear ball bearings in place. Or more often than not, you use these little retaining ring grooves to to lock them in place. Uh, you can also buy them already incorporated into into blocks of material, something like this, and then you just you know screw these uh, the enclosure holes onto whatever you're using with. Um, so th those are our linear ball bearings. Finally, the last type of bearing that we'll look at is what's called a thrust bearing. And there are a few different types of uh, this kind of bearing. Um, sometimes the, uh, the, the simpler, less expensive versions are called th thrust washers. And a thrust washer is basically just a disc of material kind of like a, a sleeve bearing is just a, a, a cylinder with no moving parts a thrust washer is just a disc and it's made out of a low friction material uh, we have these this oil light material again that that oil infused bronze uh, down here we've got bronze with um, a graphite powder embedded in it some of these are plastic we probably have some UHMW some PTFE maybe maybe some acetyl those are all very low friction plastic versions so uh, thrust washers and and thrust washers are used when um, it, it, instead of something uh, instead of a load being placed in the radial direction when something is spinning as would be the case with a ball bearing um, for for thrust bearings you have uh, again you're working with a, a rotational motion but the load in this application is in the axial direction uh, instead of the the radial direction, so the load would be placed on the face of these bearings, kind of where where I'm pointing right here. If you pushed on that face and turned, that's the kind of application that um, for which you would want to use a, a thrust washer or a thrust bearing. So going back here, uh, another type is thrust roller bearings, and just like the uh, the the needle roller bearings. We also have needle roller thrust bearings, and it's that similar, you know, small pin that that rolls and uh, around in a circle here. Again, you, you would be you would be pushing down on on this face, and you would have uh, a washer or something on top of that. In fact, here they show the washer that probably uh, is sized to go on top of this needle roller thrust bearing. Uh, and so you'd have very smooth rotational motion in the axial direction. 
and one other type is the here we go the thrust ball bearing so same principle as that thrust needle roller bearing um, except we have balls in this one instead of the the pins uh, so those are a few examples of thrust bearings if you found this content helpful consider enrolling in our signature program at mypipelineacademy.com whether you're an individual interested in beginning a new career as a mechanical designer or a company interested in training your new engineering hires, our signature program helps students develop the practical skills they need to be productive mechanical design engineers. Seating is limited. We hope to see you there soon.